Rose taps it, taps it on cleverly, retains possession of the ball, drives the ball forward, running onto the ball now, Lee Goodall, Goodall across to uh, Mick Nolan, what a fitting one it would be if Mick Nolan would have the last goal to win this game, Nolan, captain and coach, got a Nolan, great job. Showing a lot of experience here, slowing the game down, knowing that the uh, time's ticking away for the Panthers. Lining up the ball now. What a great asset he's been to Queensland football since coming here from North Melbourne. Makes the kick. How accurate is it? It's great. Mick, Mick Nolan goal to take Morning, uh, Morningside into trouble. Made almost to their 50. First pre-season, Gary Fitzpatrick. Probably more than most uh, might be able to tell us a little bit about uh, Nick Nolan, the coach. It's the first time I'll know to pull it down for something. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> well, uh, basically, he's, uh, I suppose you describe him in one word, uh, lazy. <laughs> the other night he got out of the uh, centre square for the first time in three years and <laughs> blanked through a party. <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, I think everyone, or a lot of people, sort of outside our club, look at Mick as a um, sort of big, dumb-looking bloke, and uh, they say that, and they jeer him when he's on the ground, and uh, yeah. probably even when he's at functions and that sort of thing. But they don't really know him as we know him, and the way that I see him is that uh, he really doesn't miss a trick. Uh, lots of times you think he might be putting things over him, you know, both on the track and on the field, and uh, he really doesn't miss a beat. He picks everything up. He's very astute. And I think the main thing about him is that he leads by example. I think every one of the players that has been under him over the past few years, you know, would agree with that. That uh, he wouldn't ask anyone to do anything that he wouldn't do himself. And uh, I think that's his main quality as a coach. Gary, also um, yourself, Gary Madison, Tony Beckett, Dale Woodball, Peter Stevenson, Jack Barrett, and Mick Nolan as captain were part of this year's uh, Queensland side, which did so well. Did uh, Mick have the, the same inspirational qualities on the field for Queensland as he does for the club? Yes, uh, most assuredly, uh, Bart, I think um, uh, he had the same effect on any, any team that he played in, as Barras and uh, Mopsy Rantel have already said, that he is an inspiration on the field. Uh, in the state side, one thing that will stick in my mind with the uh, final game against Tasmania was uh, just as the final siren sounded, uh, somebody happened to have the misfortune of running into Mick and they did actually uh, knock him over. I don't know how they did it, but uh, <laughs> as the final siren sounded, uh, Mick was on the ground and uh, within a matter of seconds there was, I would say, half a dozen players, and not all main players, but players from different clubs that were around Mick and were helping him to his feet. So uh, that just shows you what sort of player he is. And what sort of player. Okay, well, like our other guests this evening, we'd like you to take the uh, Mildara, Mick Nolan, special tourney court, and all the best in the coming final series. Gary Fitzpatrick. <laughs> you heard Gary outline uh, the Queensland side, very harmonious group this year. And a lot of the accolades for their performances should go to the uh, state coach, Norm Dan. He's a current coach of opposition Southport, but he is a, is a pretty top guy. He's a keen racing man, and uh, you know he'd be a good guy if that's the case. And Norm Dan, come along tonight. Tremendous team man leading the Queensland side has been going. But um, I think any coach who is a very capable captain and a captain that every player on the side can look up to. I've been fortunate in my years as state coach. First, I had Frank Gamelden, uh, another North Melbourne player. I don't know how rushing difficult down there, but he obviously was still leadership quality. And then coming back this year, I had McNolan. And uh, the example he set and the atmosphere he created. 
was something for every player to watch and learn off of. And I think it just instilled the sort of enthusiasm the man had into the side. And it just makes it so much easier to coach a side that does want to learn and is enthusiastic. There's people like Nick Nolan that do create that sort of atmosphere. Norm, um, it's, you know, you've outlined Nick's leadership qualities. He must have also been a tremendous asset as a player to Queensland this season. Yes, while you're touching on the player side of it, Mick has never formally thanked me for getting into Queensland. Uh, Noel just forgot to uh, mention that the week before he went down to see Mick, he had spoke to me about coming over to Maine. I was very interested. At the time, Ted was going pretty rough. And uh, he said he wanted a playing case, and I said, yes, I like playing. He <laughs> came over to watch Ted one day, and unfortunately I did play. <laughs> and next week he went down to North Melbourne. <laughs> As a player, um, I may just recall a few of the things that did happen with the state side this year. Uh, firstly, we were on a very tight budget, a very tight schedule in our first game in Sydney, and uh, to make things worse, the plane was late taking off. A few rumours were that they couldn't hold Mick and the side, <laughs> which wasn't true. Uh, we arrived in Sydney, we had to go straight to the motel, unload and straight back onto the bus, and then out to the uh, Sydney cricket ground. On arrival, we were confronted by Lou Richards, who said we have to be joking, bringing Mick Nolan down in the state side and a few others of the year. Uh, things were rushed. We were late getting onto the ground. Players were still getting strapping on their ankles. Not Mick Nolan, mind you, but some other experienced players, which wasn't great from a coaching point of view. And then I had to ask Mick to rut the complete first three quarters, uh, only because I wanted to rest Peter Guy. But, uh, <laughs> Mick took on the mantle, not only of captain, but rucking the complete three quarters. And even I was feeling tired from the plane trip. You know, we're up about five o'clock in the morning and things just hadn't gone as planned. And you hear of travel weariness. Well, we definitely had it. And uh, Mick led by example. He never showed any weariness at all for the first three quarters. At three quarter time, we were starting to pick our game up. And I conceded to give Mick a rest in the forward pocket on one, con one condition that every centre bounce he happened to be in there to palm the ball out and then he could head back to the pocket. <laughs> Unfortunately for Mick, I think that's 14 goals kicked in the last quarter. <laughs> he spent most of his time between the forward pocket and the centre and he did miss a few bounces but he, he often got there for the second or third one but he was always there for one of them. <laughs> After the game, a very tired man and often with players you do get little complaints. And one of the silliest things I think any player could do is wear a new, new pair of boots in a game of football, which Mick just happened to do this day. But without any complaints at all, took his boots off after the game and there was just blisters all over his feet. But he wasn't going to let that sort of pain stop him. He got above it, like every good player should, and just set an example for every player. And he got to the centre bounces, and without Mick Nolan's leadership, and not only his fine play on the day, and it was great to be able to go back care of Bruce Burgoyne to tell Lou Richards he was the worst football judge in the world that Mick Nolan was probably the best player in the world. Yes, uh, not only Tasmania, but I have to get one back of Paul Sproul because two years earlier I thought he'd put one over me in a game up here, which I wasn't very happy about, and I'd had a fierce determination for two years. Unfortunately, the QAFL made it two years and not one, but that's the way things go in football. Um, I wanted to get back at him. We got back to Tasmania, and uh, I was fortunate to be coaching the main state side at the time. Um, <laughs> Every player on that day, we didn't need a leader on that day because we had 20 of them. But Mick, at the end of the game, once the game had reigned supreme against a player in state football for Tasmania who had rucked very well the two previous games and hadn't been alive for their side, I don't think anybody could question the fact that Mick beat him and beat him pointless. And I would never swap the minute or two minutes after the game with the players in the room and the accolades and applause they gave Mick Nolan as their captain and the words he said to those players, and to top the whole trip off, and it just shows you what the man is like. Coaching Maine, he got back on a four o'clock flight, I think it was, which was uh, straight from the motel. He hadn't seen his bed. He was obviously very happy like the rest of us, and we had celebrated a little bit. And uh, came back to Coach Maine, who were playing Sherwood at the time. I thought to myself, by geez, how big is this man? Because 
I was feeling pretty good myself and I hadn't even played. You know, I had no intentions of coming back to watch Southport play because I just wouldn't have had my heart in it. But Mick came back and I uh, arrived at the airport probably three hours after Mick had departed and the chap at the airport who was obviously didn't know much about football, he said, are you with the Queensland boys? And I said, yes, and I was proud to be with them. And uh, he said, who was that big bloke that fell asleep on the chairs in the cafeteria? It must have taken us half an hour to get him up and get him up. <laughs> When I saw the result of the Sherwood Lane game, I obviously thought he hadn't got back. <laughs> but it, just, it gave me a great thrill, and I'm sure it gave Mick a great thrill. And uh, as I've written in a book outside for Mick, a big man who's done a